the standard for universal accessibility. Now, I'm going to start with an example. If I would ask you all to shut your eyes and I would read this text, Worksheet 4, Capacity, uh, Interview, and so on, as you are humans, you would understand that there's structure in this document. You would understand that the first thing I say is a title, and then because I say step one, step, th step two, step three, you would know I'm having, I'm, I'm give, giving you list items, and these list items have labels, and these list items have content. Now, for a, you can understand this because you're human. For a machine, it's more difficult to see this structure. So what we are going to do is, we are going to add this structure to the document so that the machine can understand it, so that the machine can read the document. Why is this important? It's important because a when a machine can read it, it can be used with assistive technology so that blind people, the visually impaired, can understand the d what the document is about. Now, maybe you say, hey, but we don't need this. We don't need this structure. So I'm going to give you another example. This is a spider uh, chart. Now, if I would read this out loud, for starters, I wouldn't know where to start. So this represents a number of properties and a number of uh, qualities, and there's one line that says this is the score you should have if you want a job, and the other line says this is the score that a single person had when he did an assessment. Now, first thing that you see is with a, where do I start to read? For instance, I start reading risk MGT, so risk management. That's an abbreviation, so if I read it out loud, I have to uh, elaborate on MGT is management, and then I would have to interpret this course. Now, if I would be colorblind, or if this slide would have been shown in the other room, you wouldn't see the difference between the blue line and the purple line, because yeah, uh, some, some uh, projectors don't project that, and if you're colorblind, maybe there are even people who have a hard time seeing which line is which. So what we would do, if we create a PDF UA, we will add extra information to the document, we will still show the spider chart because it's an interesting graphical representation of data, but we will resolve abbreviations. So MGT Info Business Decisions Support, we will uh, resolve this abbreviation and we'll say, we'll say management instead of MGT. We'll make the, the info color independent. So for instance, we sa we'll say, hey, this person value for functional leadership is two, and he needed three. And we'll make a decision about what goes into rows and what goes into columns. I intentionally made this table this way because that's probably not how we are going to read this table. We are probably going to read this table this way. So first standard I wanted to talk about is PDFA, so PDFA to the rescue. Let's agree on a standard way to store and interpret documents. So PDF UA is a technical specification. It's intended for developers implementing writing and processing software. When we write software, we are unambiguously going to say, this is how the document needs to be interpreted. It provides definitive terms and requirements to allow people with or without disabilities the same rights. Whoever reads this document, if it's a machine, if it's uh, a person who can see, who can't see, they should interpret the document the same way and, and should get the same information. And so if you have the appropriate software, then uh, conformance with PDF UA ensures accessibility for people with disabilities who use assistive technology as screen, such as screen readers, screen magnifiers, joysticks, and other technologies. So this is, sh in, in, in a nutshell, what PDF UA is about, making our documents in a way that they are accessible.